about stories, isn't it? I mean, uh, it's about telling the right kind of stories in the right way. And uh, you're literally only appealing to one sense, which means that uh, uh, through the ears, you have to titillate the eyes, you have to uh, titillate the tongue, and you have to titillate the mind, more importantly. And uh, yeah, if you can, uh, if you can manage to do the guti guti, <laughs> it's good radio. Uh, today, I thought, uh, what an opportunity! Actually, I'm re reading uh, Richard's book, uh, which is uh, an honor. Uh, that's Richard over there. Uh, and uh, really, I mean, whose inner child will be able to resist uh, the opportunity to uh, sit in front of people? <laughs> and talk about Susupati. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. I mean, my inner rebel is just uh, uh, rejoicing at the fact that I'll be able to say Susu <laughs> in front of parents. That's so cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the book uh, the book I've uh, picked up is, of course, uh, The Susu Pals. <laughs> um, it's been illustrated beautifully by Alicia, actually, Alicia Souza. Uh, if you haven't seen her work, it's, it's fantastic. She's right now in the process on Instagram of uh, chronicling uh, the growing up of her little one, Oliver, <laughs> and uh, their dog, Charlie. It's, it's just beautiful. If you get the chance, uh, check out Alicia Souza on, on Instagram. And... Uh, check out Richard's stories because it's actually the stories that need to be illustrated as well. So, uh, shall we start then? Um, here we go. This is the Susu Pals. Susu. But we'll say Susu, okay, today. Lots of times. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ria and Dia are two best pals. Ria and Dia? No, okay. But you're two best pals? Are you, are you best pals? No? Okay. Then you're not Ria and Dia. Uh, Ria and Dia were two best pals. The I braid your hair, you braid mine pals. The let's marry the same prince pals. The let's match our chaddis pals. The let's make sisu together pals. Just us forever and ever pals. They win battles, they fly jet planes and build palaces. Sometimes Prince helps them make sandwiches and they thank him. One day, Dia has a new classmate who becomes her new neighbor too. Dia, Ria and Prince help Isha unpack they have so many toys. At dinner time, Rhea and Prince have to remind Dia that it's time to go home. They're that kind of friends. They just don't want to go home. The next evening, Rhea and Prince wait for Dia to rob the bank. But Dia is not free. At the Dragon Slayer's picnic, Dia comes with Isha. You and this teddy look so dumb, says Isha. Yes, really dumb, agrees Dia. So, Isha and Dia find more interesting things to do. They sniff flowers, sniff, sniff. Uh, they look at bees who buzz by, and uh, there's a little mouse that looks at them and they say, oh, Rhea and Dia, they're best friends. The next evening, when Rhea and Prince go looking for Dia, she's busy. There's a do not disturb sign on the door. The two hold an important meeting. We are never going to play with her again, says Rhea. Never, never, says Prince. Dia is a mean girl club is formed. And so, Rhea and Prince go sailing by themselves. But it's no fun without the pirate. They become mysterious mummies. But it's no fun without the tomb raider. Dia was such a funny mummy, says Rhea and they miss her. They go swimming, but it's no fun without the water monster. Ah, ah, I used to go there. Scary sea monster there. They must be having fun, says Rhea. Lots of fun, says Prince. They sure have huge fun. Yellow chaddis today, says Dia. That's so silly says Isha. 
they wear yellow nail paints instead they have gigantic fun let's take prince on a cheese i'll call riya says diya that's babyish says isha they watch the cheese instead they have got ganju and fun i'm coming in too says diya that's g r o s s e u gross says isha they take turns instead soon diya is tired of taking turns i'm bored says diya that's because you're boring says isha you're a cockroach and you're boring says diya and she walks off the next day riya and prince go to their tennis lesson diya is there too the old best pals don't say hello but as they start playing red says riya chatti machi says diya machi comes another voice that's when they see him and then that he opens his mouth Machi and battles and planes and sandwiches and bank and slayer and pirate and raider and monster and tennis and Machi and Machi and more Machi. The girls, the boy and prince, they have ginormous fun together. They climb on each other's backs. They play hopscotch. They tie ribbons around their eyes. And the next day, Shiva, Rhea and Dia are three best pals. the you braid our hair we make your tattoo pals the we'll marry the same prince and you marry his sister pals matchy matchy pals the let's match our chaddi pals the let's make our ah wait i'll come in too says shiva no way say the girls because they are the we make sis together while you stand outside pals just them forever and ever the sis pals <laughs> richa has written this i've just said it so <laughs> the sis pals <laughs> so yeah that's our storytelling um Shall we have an interactive bit of session about? Uh, yeah, if there's any questions, please feel free. Raise your hands. Uh, we can talk. <laughs> no, I, I, I've seen a little little boy raise his hand. He said he was asking questions, right? My question is. All right, Sarthak, tell me this. In order to be an RJ, what is that one thing that you must, must, must possess in you? <laughs> um, <laughs> you must be so ready to make a complete fool of yourself. <laughs> okay, okay. So ready. That's a brilliant one. <laughs> like, go a hundred percent. Don't stop. Because if you're not convinced, you'll never be able to. Yeah, as as we were talking earlier as well radio classic radio actually now unfortunately everything is narrowing down so badly towards just the one sense you need to see everything you need to see your music you need to see your food uh just like that you need to see sound as well but radio traditionally was theater of the mind it was essentially one voice that would make you imagine just about everything everything from being in an aeroplane to going under underground digging ditches you know uh, tell you a story actually about uh, the power of radio um, uh, all india radio is uh, probably something that everyone makes a joke about but uh, 
most of the radio jockeys who have been sort of you know uh, even decently known have had their training in in all india radio and that's because it was a public service medium uh, they used to do things uh, to serve the listener and uh, i and without going into the intricacies of of how radio works uh, one of the frequencies used to go all the way till siachen glacier uh where the armed forces were uh, uh, were arrayed against our enemies uh for the longest time uh their only source of entertainment was this show called forces request in english and forji bhaiyon ke liye for uh, in in hindi and there would be presenters who would play songs and uh, the army post office had a direct um, express uh, a delivery service for air so there'd be postcards in yellow and then blue and and then beautified which would have some beautiful messages from the soldiers in siachen for their families and this was pre internet time so probably a little hard to imagine for a whole generation but um, uh, they would write postcards to their families which the uh, the presenter would read out on radio which would be heard by the families because they'd be tuned in knowing that there would be a message from their loved ones who were there in inaccessible places and then the families would write back on the postcards and those would be read for the people who were in siachen feeling lonely and a lot of the people who were posted in siachen they would leaves were precious for them because they wouldn't get too many but they'd make sure that they'd spend one day just coming in and thanking those presenters who would do forces request in forji bhaiyon ke liye and they would say that it is because of your sound that we can imagine our families and uh, to us that was that was what radio meant that was unfortunately uh, emotion has become so commoditized right now and and, and we're looking for uh, so much For at every moment that we forget uh, the importance of the weight and uh, and that's why probably it's a it's a little important to give ourselves a luxury of time and sometimes uh, radio gives you that so so yeah that leads us to our discussion how many children you know what the radio is do you know what the radio is yeah the next question is for the children do you know what a radio <laughs> is because our kids are so surrounded by visual and sound do they really know what a yeah yes darling a radio is uh, is is something which has music in it okay a radio gives us sounds out music did you wiggle your fingers uh, so a radio is technically um a thing that you can transmit like uh things that you want to say on i guess So see that again so uh, it's something that you can like um so if you're the host of the radio you can say something and then there's like an antenna which picks up um uh waves and then like the voices on that wave so you can pick it up and listen to that so we transmit sound okay sound yes you want to see something young man yes what is radio what do you think it is Radio. Lovely. I love that. That is so from the heart. Yes, young man here. Do you think you know what a radio is? No. Nah, he he just shakes his head. Anybody else wants to try ye radio kya cheez hai? Jiske bare mein everybody is talking. I'll tell you another story because I love telling stories and please tell me when to stop because I don't know when. Yes, you love to hear stories. Uh so uh there is a gentleman called Naresh Fernandez. uh he's the guy who uh, co-founded uh, uh, this uh, uh, this website called the wire uh, which is a hardcore news website uh is it stroll or oh, so is stroll uh yeah naresh that's right uh, but he's also written this uh, book called the taj mahal fox trot which is arguably the definitive uh, book about indian jazz and how it developed uh from the 40s and the fact that um we had a very very strong and uh, 
and flowering tradition of jazz in India. It's a beautiful book to read if, if ever you want to know about what the swinging 60s and the, and the wonderful 40s in India was like. But he told me a fantastic story about the little ones, which sort of stayed with me. He's talking about a technology that precedes radio. He was talking about uh, the vinyl player, the LP, I don't know, the record player. If, I don't even know if you guys know <laughs> or have seen it. Uh, it's that thing where there's a there's a vinyl round thing and then you put it in and, the uh, and there's a needle that you put in. So gramophone, the gramophone, that's right, yeah. Um, so uh, just as an aside, the gramophone is making a comeback as are vinyl records because uh, people have realized that if you listen to music by making an effort to play it, <laughs> it just sounds tastier. <laughs> so, um, Naresh Fernandez is this, uh, this encyclopedia of jazz. He says whenever children come to his uh, house, he doesn't say anything about, uh, about the music. He just puts on old school swing, which is a music that you can snap to, you can dance to. It was basically dance music. Jazz as a music form developed as an attempt to forget the pain of slavery for the black people. That's the, that's, that's the, that's the germination of jazz, so to speak. He would just put up uh, people like Count Basie and Louis Armstrong. Uh, he just put that in and leave it be at a volume where the kids would, would be able to hear. And he wouldn't say anything to the kids. They were free to do anything. And he says, it's never been more than five minutes that uh, the kids have uh, not jumped in front, of the, in front of the gramophone and started dancing. Because they had no idea it was jazz. They just, it was pure sound. And they were enjoying the sound. It's probably uh, good to remember that it's incumbent on us to uh, rip the labels off and maybe just uh, get the concepts, sound, sight, taste. We are uh, we're so obsessed with labeling everything nowadays that we've forgotten that there is a base feeling which often goes and should ideally uh, go um, uh, un, uh, without a definition, undefined. You know, I mean, how do you define taste? You feel it, no? Unfortunately, we've forgotten how to feel in our obsession with wanting to know more and label more. Uh, this is a favorite uh, uh, analogy of mine that I never, <laughs> I would never listen to Stevie Wonder when I was growing up uh, or, or Michael Jackson because I thought uh, they were sissy. They were like, mm, they're not macho enough for a boy to listen to. Uh, but I would listen to them in the privacy of my room because it was great music and I, I really enjoyed it, but I never could say it. It was only later that I realized that uh, who was the loser? Michael Jackson's music was as great in respect to whether I heard it or not. Uh, I was the loser in not appreciating it because I'd, I'd put that uh, label of not cool on my ear. So probably just a little food for thought where maybe, just maybe uh, labels can become fences, no? So probably a good idea to, and, and that's what we try and do on radio, which is to, break the fences of imagination, no? Because literally we can say anything within the bounds of propriety <laughs> to, to, uh, to excite uh, imagination. Uh, in fact, that's what I was talking about as well. We've, we've forgotten the importance of boredom. I still remember because I'm from the pre-internet age that sheer boredom would make us run towards the trees and break twigs and imagine that they were guns. Uh, sheer imagination would make us uh, roll leaves or paper into shapes and, and make them uh, ships and aeroplanes and, uh, and battleships and tanks and fight with them and tell stories. Uh, maybe the stories are, are being drowned out by all the cacophony of uh, attention spans. I mean, we have the luxury of time in our hands. It's just that we delude ourselves that there isn't any. <laughs> there is probably a good idea to sort of Luxuriate in the luxury of time. I'm saying the line about luxury of time from what? And say, I'm looking at time, don't have the luxury. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, I'm going to request, I think, no better person to sort of 
say a thank you to Sarthak than you, Richa. Yes, I mean, Sarthak. from... <laughs> this is indeed a wonderful moment. We really get the author and the wonderful storyteller together. Thank you, everybody.